Hey everyone, thanks for watching Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace. This is a podcast style show where we take a big topic and we break it into chunks so it's easier for everybody. And this week we're talking about death. So I'm really glad we're breaking this up because this is a huge topic. Yesterday we covered what happens when you die and how you even know when you're dead. We talked about the day before because that's kind of a gray area. But seriously, what like really happens after you die, like to your body? So first, you need to know how your body reacts. Your body essentially stops working on a macro level, but on a micro level, you're still going. Firstly, at zero hours, the moment of death, all your muscles relax because you're not burning energy to keep all of those muscles tense. This means that your body's sphincters react and relax too. You don't have that many sphincters, one of them I'm sitting on. So most people when they die, though not everybody, ends up pooping themselves and probably peeing themselves too if they haven't gone recently. Without burning oxygen through breathing to keep your cells alive and keep you tense, you don't get to maintain muscle tension. Though at the cellular level, on the micro level, some of those cells are still alive. Just because you're dead here and maybe even here doesn't mean that you're dead here some of these skin cells are still living. Similar to when you cut a tree down, the leaves don't know that it's dead. They're still trying to work. But eventually, if I'm laying on my back and I'm dead, the fluids in your body, which are many, will start to settle because you're not pumping them around anymore. So all of your blood, all of your lymph, all of the other fluids that are in your stomach and in your intestines, those all begin to settle at your gravitational low points. So if you're laying down, that's your back. If you're somehow standing up, that means they will settle down toward your feet. Eventually, your blood starts to clot, and every hour, a human body will lose about one and a half degrees Celsius until it hits room temperature. Now, there's a reason that we maintain an internal body temperature, and once we start to cool off, different fluids are gonna behave in different ways. But that happens all over time. So over the next three to six hours, your muscles will actually begin to tense again. And it's not because you suddenly have started breathing. The muscles are still messed up forever, but they'll tense for about 24 to 48 hours. And this is what we call rigor mortis, or a stiff corpse. What's happening is inside of each of our muscles, there are calcium containers or little areas where calcium is, is held so that when we need our muscle, calcium can be sent to where it needs to flex because we need that calcium to flex our muscles. It's part of the bio machine that keeps us all running. And without the tension, that calcium starts to seep out into our muscles and they just tense all over. And eventually the eyes will start to cloud over uh, especially if they're left open, but most of the time, like more than 60% of the time, people actually die with their eyes closed. Additionally, if you think of rigor mortis, you're not going to be able to just softly close the eyes of a dead person. They would just not move. You'd have to really force them. So it's something else that the movies have kind of made crazy. Also with the dead people not pooping themselves. They all pretty much would. Uh, over the next 24 hours, and then as time moves on over the next week, de decomposition starts. And the same thing that is if you left a pizza on your countertop starts to happen to anything else. The microbes don't know reverence for, for human bodies. Cells that were burning energy after death can't throw away the trash, so as they're burning that energy, they're creating what would get swept away and disposed of in the waste systems of the body, but they can't be because nothing is pumping around. So acids build up, pH rises, tissues that normally would have integrity begin to burst, releasing fluids, and we are 70% water, so that's really messy. Yuck. <laughs> Think about your stomach and your intestines. They all have acids in them as well as microbes, and all of that has to go somewhere, so most of the time it just gets released. And the pancreas, interestingly enough, starts digesting itself. Pretty cool. We turn green, we turn purple, and then tissues start bursting and releasing all sorts of fun smells. If you're not grossed out yet, that's gross already, but if you're not, 
Have you ever smelled death? Like, I don't mean like by the side of the road. I mean, actually smelled death. It's If you have, talk about it in the comments because wow, it's unique for sure. If all of this stuff happened in a vacuum, what would happen to the human body? The same thing that would happen any other time because there are microbes living in your body that would start eating you pretty much the moment that you die. And for every cell in the body, we actually have 10 different bacteria that are in or on us. For every cell that's us, there's 10 bacteria living in or on us. And that bacteria doesn't know or probably really even care that much that you are dead. It probably doesn't even know that you exist, really. So that begins to digest you. And bacteria, when they eat things, usually excrete stuff, commonly gas. So that gas starts to build up in your body as well. And since you're probably not in a vacuum when you die, insects and animals will also take part in this. So if you're, again, if you're not grossed out yet, they lay eggs in your body, and then the eggs grow and eat the tissues that they find. This is a normal part of nature. It happens to everything. Trees, happens. Animals in the woods, happens. Humans, it used to happen, but we kind of take ourselves out of that cycle. So much stuff happens, and so many people seek out meaning at death. We want to assume that our lives are important and unique, and at the end, the stuff that lives in and on us, the stuff that makes us who we are, it's, it's just stuff. You know, it's just there. So how we deal with death almost becomes more important than death itself. And not all cultures look at that the same way. If you are as morbidly fascinated by death as I am, make sure you talk about it down in the comments. And for more Test 2 Plus, subscribe and come back tomorrow where we're going to talk about how three different cultures handle death. Pretty interesting stuff. Plus, if you're just joining us and you've never been on Test 2 Plus before, hi, welcome. Subscribe so that you can get all of our videos and make sure you go back and watch the first couple of episodes about death. It's been a pretty interesting ride so far. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.